Welcome back there, buds. Here's the next little project I gotta get started on here today. I uh, removed that back panel. This is an old, it's an oak, I guess white oak, uh, bookcase. It was uh, a wedding gift for this customer's wedding. And it was a few years ago, so it just needs a little TLC. And uh, one of the main issues, just the doors won't really close right. The whole thing is really loose. You can see a lot of, a lot of wiggle in it. So one thing right off the bat I noticed, I mean, just from building cabinets and things in the past, you have this big of a piece. I mean, it's really, there's a couple corner blocks up there. One came off. I mean, that's not gonna do anything. So I'm gonna put some stretchers. I have some oak that would match this and then I can, you know, color match and everything. Maybe do about a, you know, probably about a three or four inch across the top, one across the bottom, and that'll make it very strong. It won't be any more wiggling. Plus this top looks like it's about ready to come off. So just gotta get that off and re-glue it. And overall, I mean the finish finish on these sides and everything look good the only part of it that really looks that bad up top there it's missing a little bit of finish and uh, you know just some scratches and things like that so what I might do when I get that top off I might actually just uh, sand that down and just refinish the top to match this and then clean up and touch up the rest of it yeah I mean the rest of it looks great there's really no point in you know stripping this all down and everything it's just not I don't even think it would look as good I think this is uh, aged nicely she obviously took really good care of it so we just got to address some of those repairs and uh, maybe you know just rejuvenate the finish a little and take care of the top okay Duke. now well I got the top off it just popped right off that glue all the glue that was left on there it's just so dried out and just nothing holding that and then they just have two nails on either end holding it which I guess I'll just let them in there yeah so the rest of this is all down along the bottom it's so loose you can see it move I basically think I just gotta knock it all apart re-glue it all there's no sense in just doing that one little repair and the rest is still all loose so I'll just get it all knocked apart and get it cleaned up and ready for glue One other thing here that jumped out at me, I have my suspicions, I always wonder a piece I'm working on, sometimes I can tell right away, sometimes I see little clues like this, whether or not it had previously been refinished or repaired, and this one was refinished. If you look there, that is some of the old finish that they didn't get out of that that detail carving, this used to be a darker piece and they refinished it a little bit lighter after I got that all apart there got everything cleaned out everything's looking good on that glued that back piece up and these are the two stretchers for across the top and the bottom of the back to add some support and I decided to use pocket screws to hold these in and I typically frown upon pocket screws but since this is basically a cabinet and that's what pocket screws are made for I'm gonna use them so it'll add a lot more reinforcement help that glue 
get in there better because there's I mean there's really nowhere how this was traditionally built if you could see there is like a stretcher up here and they just nailed in from the side of that to hold that up and I don't know that's not it's not exactly how I want to do it and you can see here at the bottom the two nail holes there so I also put them across this will be across the top front that'll add a lot more support you're never gonna see these you'll never know these are here I'll know they're here and I guess you will too since you saw this but uh, yeah these will go across the back then and this will be pocket screws will be on the back side and that whole back panel will cover anything hopefully I can get this back together before Bucko eats it so now I also cut a couple more those two corner blocks top here those are missing let's cut new ones of those and also the doors originally when they would close they would just pretty much be pushed right back in through so kind of wanted to mimic that detail but just make it a little bit taller so I got that all cut out I get that on there and then I also just made this little piece for the top. There used to be something up here to keep the top of the door from going in, but it fell off too. So made a new one of those. So I just got to get all these on get the top, get everything just glued back up for the day and call it a day. Ready, Buck? You ready? You ready to help? Are you going to help? Come on! <laughs> had a couple changes of plans but fixing a crack on that side letting that dry so I figured I'd get it up take a look at the bottom find out what was happening uh, so there were those were the on the bottom attached with carriage bolts up through and as you can see I mean this was so rigged together the thread there's like no thread there to even hold it so they were I mean you could just wobble them back and forth so I had to cut those out once I got that all out uh, I'm kind of rebuilding this bottom because it tended to lean frontwards it would lean forward and almost be falling over it's just very unstable and the wheels I'm back. these are the wheels on the bottom they are maybe an inch big so I mean for a piece that big to put inch wheels on I don't get it but anyways so here's what I'm gonna do got this poplar cut up I'm gonna take and I'm gonna you know because those I mean those original feet were this 
I mean, they were just so high, and then after you put the wheels on, I mean, the thing sat up so far off the ground that it really didn't have to. So I'm going to make it a little bit closer here. And then when I put this on to try to fit it up, you can see how far... It's maybe about an eighth of an inch different that... Uh, that data you can see it a little bit better from the inside but yes I mean, that's why it's leaning forward I got these new bottoms on glued and screwed from the top down put some new casters they're not quite as antique as the old ones but they're definitely going to be more sturdy and from you know I don't think uh, anybody's going to really crawl underneath this thing anytime soon and say hey those aren't you know nice antique wheels <laughs> so I'm gonna go with those because they'll be just you know more functional then I put a new stop block here for the door with a magnet then I'll have to do the same at the top and I just started cleaning up some of the filler so I can get that touched up then I'll just put the trim across the front here Put a little bit of stain on these just to color match, get them looking a little better. We'll flip it up and take a look at, see where we're at. Now that I got this set up, next thing I did, got these doors all aligned. I put uh, it's like the magnets for cabinet doors on the top and the bottom. So now closes. It stays closed. It's all lined up pretty good. One nice thing is when it closes, it's not hard at all to opens nice and easy. And then I got this uh, stretcher glued in, tacked in across the back just to keep that floor level. And then I put those two pieces along the sides there to hide the screws from the new, the new uh, wheels I put on. And I just gotta get some stain and get some finish, get that all to match. And I think next, while that dries up and sets. I'm going to try to figure out the top. Well, I windexed it down with some 4 rot steel wool. Doesn't look terrible. There's a couple places there. There's a big dark scratch. And a lot of the finish is, seems to be missing on a lot of it. So, I don't know, I guess I'm just going to have to mask this off from here down and refinish the top edge, the top, just because the, the rest of it all looks good, but the top is just missing too much finish and it has too many scratches. And now the top is all sanded down to 220. Got those scratches out and any little dings. It's not perfect, but it's much better than it was. And there's one pass with the gel stain. And that color is pretty close already.
Well, I gave it a day to dry. That top looks pretty nice now. No more scratches or dings in it. Got it to match up with the rest of it. I also masked off down in there those new pieces I added. Got those sprayed. So, just gotta get all the masking off and give it a quick once over the rest of the cabinet. Get it all cleaned up and touched up. Wipe down the glass. And as usual, here are my three go-to's for doing any kind of cleanup touch-up. I begin with, I dilute Windex by half, just with some water. Just to break it down a little bit, if you have this full strength, it would really ruin the finish. But just a little bit of that ammonia in there helps to break down the oils in that finish and clean any of the, you know, wear and tear and just normal, you know, uh, the oils from our skin, just atmosphere, the air, there's a lot of uh, contaminants in that. So that helps to prep the surface and clean it up. And I'll just uh, use the, the 4 aught steel wool, wipe it down with a clean rag. And I never spray that directly onto the furniture. You want to spray it on to the steel wool. I've done that in the past. And you can find a lot of little tiny dots from where you spray it. So, just a uh, live and learn process. Then the next step, I like this product. Been using it for years and years and years. And I've seen a lot of the furniture that I have, uh, you know, cleaned up. You know, years later, still looks exactly like it did the day after I did it. So, I can tell you that that product does work and it does last. It doesn't fade, it doesn't, you know. So, I like to stick with it. Once again, I just wipe it on with the grain, with a little bit of 4 out steel wool. Then I'll let it sit a little bit, because this is made up of just basically stain and solvents that will eat into the existing finish to just revive it. Then I'll use a little brush here to work it into any of the cracks or crevices or anything in the, any kind of detail carving. Then after that sets up a little while, this same company, they have a product in I never used to use this, but then I discovered this, and I do like to use this now. It just helps to uh, add a little bit more, I don't know, I guess just a little bit more sheen to it. And I don't like a high gloss finish on anything, and it doesn't give it a high gloss finish, but it just, I think it kind of adds just a little bit more, protects that almost, helps to seal it in almost. But uh, yeah, it's just beeswax and orange oil. This is not food grade though, so I don't use this on things like cutting boards or uh, You know any kind of thing that you would uh, Use around a kitchen or eat with and you just wipe that on with a With a rag let it sit a little while Usually, you know 10-15 minutes and Then I'll just give it a good wipe down a couple times And that's it Here is a side I'm going to show you from uh, start to finish with that process. You can just see what the finish looks like now compared to what it will look like when I'm done.
Well, buds, here we are with another one done. As always, if you like what you see, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to this channel to follow along with future projects, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.